Americanization in anime, the history and horrors of four kids entertainment. Uh, <laughs> Alright, just to show of hands, how many people here grew up watching uh, four kids dubs? Okay. Right, everyone else is a little newer, they didn't have to go through what we did. Okay. You're busy. Alright, so let's get started. Alright, is everyone glad to be back after a year? positive than a little bit of patriotism. Yeah! So everybody, please rise for our national anthem. Or say it as I Volume would be nice. was for kids entertainment. Uh, that was an American licensing company responsible for dubbing, producing TV shows for the English market. Uh, they were notorious though for overdubbing, localizing, and unnecessary edits. Uh, there's some examples of censored topics, uh, but they're particularly notorious for their dub of One Piece because it was so edited and didn't make sense half the time. Uh, we know a lot of you are here for One Piece, and don't worry, we got a lot of clips for you. <laughs> Thank you. Alright, All right. why is Forkin so notorious to this day? Because, you know, there were other companies at the time, but like we said, for unnecessary, dumbing down. While we may not like it, you have to understand that they would edit out things like blood, excessive violence, it's a showing for kids in the 90s, blah, 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 well, early 2000s actually. But they seem to think that not only their audience was children, but children who couldn't learn anything. And there was stuff they got wrong, even if their series had been out for a long time, and of course, a certain rap song. <laughs> <laughs> All 
right? All right, there were some similar companies at the time. There was a, yeah, it's fun to pick on four kids and everything, but they weren't the only one doing this. Uh, Sabin, Novana, Ocean Group did some dubbing themselves. Uh, they're not as notorious, but I think they personally, I think they deserve it. Now, we um, debated including companies besides four kids, but since the main point of this panel is Americanization, it would be a miss not to include them. Also, it's just freaking hilarious. A <laughs> uh, term I came across while doing research was bowdlerization, or to bowdlerize. That means altering, ex um, altering existing material so it's less likely to be seen as offensive. You can make a villain less evil or at an event. Uh, this is named after a man named Thomas Bowdler, and he did it on the Bible and William Shakespeare's plays. <laughs> Example is he changed Ophelia's drowning from suicide to an accident. Okay. Okay, but his intent, I want to point out, is that he was introducing Shakespeare to audiences who wouldn't be able to see the material because it was considered, you know, risque. And he did tell people, you know, there's an original version out there, and you should seek it out, which is more than you can say for a dubbing, modern dubbing company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So here we have a list of all the anime series that were acquired and or produced by four kids. Unfortunately, we won't have time to go through each and every one listed here, but we're going to discuss the uh, most notorious examples. Yeah, the way this panel works is we're going to do a little history on four kids, have some trivia, and a whole lot of clips. Okay, but I believe credits do where credits do, and the OK dubs were Shaman King and uh, Kinugman, and this are, these are not perfect, but they were more sensible. Shaman King, uh, it couldn't avoid the big subject they like to avoid most of the time, which was death, mm -hmm. because this was about people bonding with souls in the afterlife. It was a pretty dark theme, and parents would complain, which is always a good sign. <laughs> now, the second series was a sequel to a longer-running anime manga series, and this was actually a show that did really badly in Japan, but did well into the U.S. to the point it was uh, actually the final season was funded by four kids only for the English-speaking market. It avoided a lot of censorship somehow, and had a lot of double entendre humor. All right, so here's three or four kids. We're going to go over this quickly. Uh, originally known as Leisure Concepts Incorporated, founded in 1970 by Mike Dermakin, who was one of the creators of Thundercats, and Stan Weston, the creator of G.I. Joe and Captain Action. All right. All right. So our first trivia question. What was the first Japanese product that the company advertised? Any guesses? Bueller. <laughs> answer? Nintendo, specifically The Legend of Zelda. And behold their first ad. What's oh. oh. happening? Oh, yes, I see. This didn't happen last time. Did you see the latest Nintendo newsletter? Whoa, nice graphics. I'd like to get my hands on that game. You mean you haven't played it yet? We can play it on my Nintendo Entertainment System. <laughs> it's the legend that Zelda and it's really rad. Those creatures from Japan are pretty bad. Octorok's tech tanks and Libras too. But with your help, our hero pulls through. Yeah, go on it. It's awesome. Intense. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Your parents help you hook it up. The Legend of Zelda sold separately. <laughs> As we can see, they were ruining things from Japan even before they got their hands on anime. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so it begins early 90s. They expand operations, begin TV production in 92, including English language dubs of anime through uh, Four Kids Productions. 1995, they formally changed their name to Four Kids Entertainment. And in 1998, they started dubbing episodes of Pokemon. Early 2000s, uh, 2001, they get Yu-Gi-Oh! Mm -hmm. And in 2002, they signed a $100 million deal with Fox uh, to program the Saturday morning lineup, premiered in later in 2002 mm -hmm. as Fox Fox, after four, uh, Fox Kids got discontinued. Mm -hmm. Alright, early 2000, 2004, they get the distribution and merchandising license for One Piece. And in 2005, they were rebranded as Fox Kids TV, I mean, Four Kids TV, and were responsible for the entire Saturday morning block. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have another trivia question. Our next trivia question. Four Kids dubbed its first anime series, Pokemon, in 1998. What was the last series they dubbed? Ah, you were there. All the way in the back, uh... Louder? You there, all the way in the back? What's that? Was it Yu-Gi-Oh! No, good guess, but no. No, good guess, though. Anyone else? I know the last time in Pokemon, but I can't Oh, wait. Oh. No, they're close in error, but no. 
This was in 2012. So we're still dumbing in 2012. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z Kai. Oh, jeez. Sorry, I blocked that out of my memory. Well, here's a good example. Please sound. <laughs> this is the CW4 Kids. But uh, there were theme changes. Uh, best examples are Sailor Moon and Cardcaptor Sakura. They were originally, the Japanese intro is like focus on love, it's a love song, mm -hmm. and the English changed it to more combat and action. I think both are good, and there's still a market for them. You see how many English covers get made. And most countries, not just the US, would do um, musical intros in their own language. But the practice pretty much died out by 2010, and you'll only see it in a legacy series, mm -hmm. like shows like Pokemon. Um, it was brought to our attention the last time we did this panel that there were people who hadn't heard the One Piece rap, so... Oh, oh my god! Get away! Get the volume works. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. No! Don't give it up, Don't give it up, Sora! Don't give it up, Nami! Decided to go with the rap. 
right, so on this subject, I actually found an interview with Alfred Kahn, who was the CEO and chairman of 4Kids. And uh, his very interesting, he basically boils it down to they did English, uh, they redid the music to make it more Western, children in English speaking countries could understand, and they were once again trying to appeal to kids and, of course, you know, grab the royalties. Mm -hmm. All right, and we begin with the example. Of <laughs> oh my god, donuts! You know, they're clearly rice balls. From a Japanese donuts. Donuts. They seem especially the offended by yeah. rice balls. <laughs> These donuts are great! <laughs> It's a jelly-filled donut. Oh, it's clearly a rice ball. They didn't even bother redoing it. It's so bad. What's up? バイトでカフェでお金を損ってきて。ちょっとシングルクラッカー。疲れ切ってた僕たちは。最後の食料を食べようとしてた。うん。食料。もう。もう。もう。もう。もう。もう。もう。もう。もう。もう。もう。もう
that's just sad. And other relationships is uh, Yukito, or Sakura's older brother Toya. They have a close relationship, but they thought this was too risque, and so they just toned it down, even though they're really nothing but friends who hang out a lot. Uh, Lee is, has a sort of drawn to Julian, but this is a magical affinity point. Uh, but instead they edit so that he's just randomly terrified around him. <laughs> no real reason. Okay. And uh, jumping on top of that point, everyone remember this one? Wait, are we skipping over the child relationship? <laughs> there was a teenage, there was a, 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 a yes. No, they're not. No, they're not. I thought I'd tell you everything. Oh, look! Here come Amara and Michelle! Oh, great. Why do you think they've entered the contest? They're girls and cousins, too! Amara and Michelle! Fantastic! You're the best cousins in the world! How'd you guys meet then? We're cousins! We grew up together! Huh? We've been inseparable huh? since we were born. We can almost read each other's minds. Like best friends? Amara's already gone. Oh, That's her friend. Her name is Michelle, remember? My sport is worth so much to me that I sometimes forget all about happiness. But it is as it should be, and my cousin and my other good friends take care of my social life. So you see, I'm not lonely without a boyfriend. I bet. I don't think about it at all. It seems so long ago, my first kiss. Not for me, Amara. Uh -huh. It feels like... Like it was yesterday. It was so magical. Oh. I remember tough, right? it vividly. It was with Brad, the cutest guy. <laughs> <girl. laughs> That's clearly a mo- <laughs> Leave it to me, guys. No. This seems so incestuous. Yes, so they were, instead of uh, girlfriends, they were very flirty cousins. Yeah, apparently. All right, and I've uh, kind of interesting change up. They also uh, were sensitive about religious imagery. This usually took the form of decrossing or taking out crosses. Remember, this is the Fox Network. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this usually happened with swords and uh, would have sometimes tragic effects for the animation. Mm -hmm. They also they changed the name of things, like uh, Devil Fruit became Cursed Fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, Ofuda became uh, Anti-Ghost Diggers, which I guess is their point. But the worst offenders are One Piece and Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You'll see. Uh, here's some examples from Shaman King. Like, it was a show about death, but they still have to cut some stuff out. Uh, here's okay. One Piece. So the character was in a store that's basically a giant crucifix, and uh, also a knife necklace that's in the shape of a crucifix. I forgot about that. Strangely, it was left in the intro, but not in the show. Yeah. And nothing poor kids was sensitive about uh, crucifixion. So if any character ends up in a crucifix pose, they would change the background. Now, uh, this is interesting to bring up. Uh, you know Japan's pretty much a secular country and Christianity is not a very popular religion there. I think it's like 2% of the population would identify. But you see a lot of crucifixion imagery in anime, right? Notice that? Does anyone know why that is? Because it's cool. <laughs> it kind of is, but there's a reason behind it. In the very back? in the history, but there's actually a different region for it. Right? The reason is, it's actually an Ultraman reference. You see, the creator of Ultraman and Ultra 7 was actually a Catholic, and he liked to infuse religious imagery into his work. And Ultraman is like the way what we would regard Star Trek uh, here. It's kind of an iconic sci-fi series and other and other media loves like to reference it. So yes and no, it's meant to be religious, but uh, so the crucifixion doesn't have like the impact it would in the West, but it's an Ultraman reference over there, but it was based in Catholicism, so. And it's a really iconic scene when we have here. There's even a toy you can get in it. <laughs> no, fun facts. They also took type of fans at Christmas. Mm -hmm. Christmas be Merry Christmas became Miss Groundhog Day. Come on, Mars. Wow. Really? And of course, Yu-Gi-Oh cards weren't spared either. Uh, Amos got replaced to avoid religious connotation, even uh -huh. they're Egyptian hieroglyphs. They are also recognized by Coptic Christians. And I think anyone knows Team Four Star. Home <laughs> um, for infinite losers. Well, you know what? Let's let's get off the subject of religion and lighten things up. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about race for a second. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so there were some very um, unconvincing edits. Uh, four kids wanted to avoid possible controversy over, you know, blackface caricatures, but the moves were kind of controversial themselves, and honestly, is this, exactly. is this fooling anyone? Not no. Right, and uh, it wasn't just Ricky that got the treatment, there was Pokemon too. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there was an episode called The Ice Cave that didn't get aired by four kids because Jinx was in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jinx is supposedly, like, some defenders will say it's based on the gun girl fashion trend, which if you know the trend, that's not a good argument. It's also been accused of uh, blackface. Mm -hmm. And Yama Uba, that, that's a Japanese ice spirit, suppose it looks like Jinx. She really doesn't. But And there was an episode more recently of Pokemon Sun and Moon that didn't get aired due to blackface concerns. Make your own conclusions there. Now that's something in anime that really should be addressed. Uh, we're really not the ones to, to be addressing it, but I think we can say that four kids didn't help Hyman with their solution. They decided just that when it came out in one piece, make the guy white. <laughs> yeah, not helping. No. Next category? Yeah, they did not like this either. Yes, yeah, so it was a scene in Yu-Gi-Oh cards oh. and the shows. And it wasn't, uh, to be fair, it wasn't only applied to female characters. <laughs> <laughs> so they made, these guys had a bunch of cards. He had to put a shirt on, and they also got rid of his crucifix. And they also hate the <laughs> cheeks. <laughs> now my personal favorite, though, Crotch Dragon from Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> 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 oh my god, the lollipops. Now, uh, you ever notice that in a uh, character, uh, in anime, smoking is kind of cool? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost like one character that smokes, and he's kind of like the, you know, the cool or aloof guy. Mm -hmm. So when you change that, you're kind of uh, going for a tone change. So. Yeah. <laughs> The lollipop. So to replace his uh, tough guy image, that's the kind of thing that the smoking did. They gave him a Brooklyn accent. That, yeah, that you'll hear that later. And this is actually so infamous, it actually got referenced in the manga later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here we have Crocodile without his cigar. But I think an even better example than Sanji is uh, Captain Smoker, aka Captain Chaser. <laughs> He just had uh, smoke coming out of his mouth, you know, where the cigarettes and cigars used to be. Which, mm -hmm. uh, they Makes claim no he sense. ate the smoke smoke fruit, which is weird because they actually changed his power to steam to begin with. <laughs> so let's take a look. <laughs> Three scoops, yummy! Careful, don't run now or you'll drop it, honey. Oh my! 
superb branches. Papers. It's a 54.